veteran here with another league starter and this is going to be lightning conduit on a witch elementalist so for those of you that really want to feel like the emperor this is going to be the build for you this is probably not one of our strongest league starters but a lot of people do really like playing a lightning build there's a quick tldr on pretty mediocre gear you do get around 3 million damage and since we are an elementalist it does not have the strongest defense it might not be the best thing for hardcore but should be a great league starter to get your atlas set up and do everything on softcore as an uber killer it is not going to be the best build so it's not without downsides but as you can see in the background lightning conduit is very cool and fun to play so if you like lightning builds this is a great choice for a starter if you're wondering how to play this build lightning conduit basically consumes the shock that's on the enemy to do lots of damage so it is a two button skill and the way this works when you're playing is that you have the choice between either orb of storms or stormbrand to apply the shock and the difference here is that stormbrand is a lot safer because you can do it further away feels really nice for clearing that was my clearer of choice and then orb of storms is just straight up better because every time you're casting a lightning ability it procs against you can basically spam uh and do a lot of damage especially for single target um and honestly in general orb of storms is better but storm brand will feel better so that's how you play the build and then we have uh, cursing as well and you can do wave of conviction early before you get the exposure on the gloves if these builds help you have a great league start for affliction please consider subscribing it does help the channel massively and thank you so much we're starting out with Stormblast, Mine, and Orb of Storms, and then Frostblink early and the Spot to Flame Dash at level 10. Stand inside the Orb of Storms while using and detonating your Stormblast Mine, and that'll make the Orb of Storms cast itself more often. Then this is the setup all the way to maps. So as normal, we are using Path of Building. If you aren't familiar with this, we do have a video on how POB works. So check that out if you are familiar with it we are using our normal step-by-step -step skill tree to make sure that you don't get overloaded obviously the skill tree is very large and we do want to make sure that you know exactly where to go and ascendancies are baked into this as well so it's very very easy to follow same with our skills everything here is in different groups so now once we're in maps you can see the end game setups here and this is without any awaken gems and anything like that so we do actually have quite a lot of things we can do to scale it and uh, with the actual end game gear we have shown, we got around like um, five or six million damage. And you could probably pump it out to like eight or nine. But this is a build that does have a bit of a, um, a bit of a ceiling. Like it's not going to be a build that you want to put a hundred divines into. It's going to be more of a build for those that you want to have a really cool league start. You want to have something fun, and then maybe play around the other drops that you get and choose a build later. Everything's pretty easy to follow here. The castle and damage taken setup. You do want castle and damage taken to be level one, one shell level ten. The other two can be leveled up to 20. There's no other gem that we're using that needs to be low level. Everything should be high level. And do remember that they have switched the way gem cutter prisms works for flipping gems. Now you can sail a level 20 support gem with one GCP and it'll flip to level one with 20 quality. You'll just level it back up. But we can no longer do this with our active gems. And another thing to note as well, the transfigured gem is not great for us because we are scaling a lot of shock and the gem doesn't really scale with that. So we are just using the normal gem with normal quality. Another thing that's very important for the build as well, you do want to get one cold damage somewhere. Like for example, on a jewel like this, that is pretty important so that we're getting some sort of chill. And then later you can get that on your helmet implicit here, like adds 10 to 19 cold damage to spells. And the reason we want to make sure that we have cold damage somewhere is chills from your hits always reduce enemy action speed by at least 10%. So even having one cold damage will proc that. So it's very, very strong and you want to make sure you have it. It's a great defensive thing. And our ascendancy in our build in general doesn't have a large amount of defenses. We only have 5,000 life. We do get for suppression, etc. But we don't have an insane amount of armor innovation. We only have like 20k. That being said, it will feel very tanky for most softcore players that aren't used to having any tank on their build. You have different things here. Early on, you just want lightning damage to spells and cast speed is good. And also things like plus one gems. Um, and other than that, most of our gear early, you just want uh, life and resist. So it's very, very easy to follow early. We don't need any uniques or anything crazy. So you don't have to worry about not dropping something. And then in the mid game, you can go for a scepter like Singularity. They end up being pretty cheap and you can snag one quite early. If a lot of people do end up going for builds like this, they do end up a lot in price and you don't need to worry about it too much. And you can just go for as close to as possible of a scepter like this you can get. You really want a lot of gem levels on this build. Then you can see here we have loads of things like the uh, Daring Exarch and Eater of Worlds implicits so that you know what you should be going for. And this is like a lot of the end game gear. 
So if we look here, in endgame gear with the endgame seals, and this is without crazy stuff like awaken gems, then it gets like 6 million. But even on the mid-game stuff, and again without awaken gems, it is 3 million DPS. Very, very fun to play. I have played Lightning Conduit myself, and it is a great build. And obviously, we always try to be very, very uh modest in how much gear and how much everything we put on because if a build works on a very low budget and cheap then it'll probably work even better when you actually put things on it so this is sure to give you a great league start for your flasks we're going for flagellant that means they're gaining charges when you're hit by an enemy the level three i believe only appears at item level 80 or something like that um so early on you're just going for two charges when hit by an enemy if you check here in the notes section we do have a bunch of things like how do you get exposure can you get leech etc and uh everything should be explained here so make sure you check that out very very smooth and it's really fun to play especially for mapping and especially for soft goal players a chest like impulsa is a lot of fun but you can see that we have a large amount of defense on our chest so it will be a lot squishier even though you do get those juicy fun explosions so on this build we're using eldritch battery so i want to explain how that works it converts your energy shield and turns it into mana and it's pretty much always recharging so it's really really good to recover so on this build we're using a belt like a crystal belt that gives us a lot of energy shield you can see that we're using hybrid gloves like murder mitts this will give you a bunch of energy shield so we do actually care about energy shield the problem is we do still want armor innovation so you just want as much energy shield you need for casting comfortably and past that you want to go for armor innovation but remember that there are hybrids for your boots and your helmet as well you could use and hopefully you can get an okay amount of energy shield on your actual shield so the easiest boss to get it is your gloves and shield the simplex amulet comes from heist and ash frost and storm is a super cheap and super good anoint and uh if you get plus one lightning or plus one spell then it'll be plus two this is really really cool and then all the suffixes will get 100 percent increased so very very strong and yeah, you just gotta spam heist and hope that you get this. The bandits for this build is skill points. You kill them all, and the major god is Brian King, and the minor god is Valakesh. That's pretty much everything for this build guide. It should be really fun, and Lightning Conduit is pretty strong. It is just not one of the S tier ones like Detonate Dead or Toxic Rain or Explosive Arrow as a starter. So I hope you guys have a great league start with this. Thank you so much for watching. Sub if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do. Good luck in affliction.